Hi there, this is Rainy from Serenity. Greetings from Seattle. Um, so in this video, I'll be teaching a 45 minutes to about an hour Gong Fu Cha course. Um, basically, we'll be covering a variety of topics such as the Western style versus Gong Fu Cha style brewing, a brief history of Gong Fu Cha, what teaware you need to prepare in order to brew tea with Gong Fu Cha style, and lastly, we'll go over um, four different brewing methods by using a gaiwan. So this course is for people with various levels, whether you are a Gong Fu Cha beginner or if you're thinking about you know, getting into um, learning about the style or if you're experienced um, Gong Fu Cha tea drinker and you're maybe looking for more comprehensive or more detailed information to enhance your knowledge, this course will be for you. Alright, so for those that are not familiar with what Gong Fu Cha exactly is, I will give a brief introduction. Basically, Gong Fu Cha is a traditional brewing style of tea from China and is exclusive to Chinese tea culture. To put it in a fancier way, just like what the name indicates, to brew tea with Gong Fu Cha style, it requires Gong Fu or in other words, skills, such as the amount of water that you'll be using, the amount of tea leaves that you'll be using, um, or the steeping time. So instead of using a timer, you're going to time it with your mind. So after you put all these components together, you should be able to reach the optimal result when you brew tea. So you might be asking, what are some of the main differences between Western brewing style and Chinese Gong Fu Cha brewing style? And that's an excellent question. First of all, let's talk about the difference in methodology. For a Western brewing style, we usually use a teapot and the same amount of tea leaves and brew the teas for up to three to five minutes and repeat the process for maybe two to three times. Whereas when you do Gong Fu Cha style, you use either a Gaiwan or you use a Chinese style teapot such as this one right here or here's another example. You will use also the same amount of tea leaves, the same tea leaves um, the brewing time is anywhere between 3 to 5 seconds, very fast, and you repeat the process for maybe up to 10 times, 15 times, even 20 times sometimes, depending on the tea. The second difference lies in the brewing result. Western style is more likely to burn tea leaves since the steeping time is so long. The, teas, the tea flavors tend to be more flat but consistent. However, it is an easy and good brewing style for tea bags, herbal teas, milk teas, and flavored teas. So Gong Fu Cha style, on the other hand, doesn't burn tea leaves. It actually reveals the changes of fragrance and flavors over each steeping. This process helps tea drinkers to better understand the truth of a tea, um, to recognize the quality of a tea, and hence it creates a more interesting process for tea drinkers. It's also a more ideal um, brewing method for more delicate and pure teas such as the traditional loose leaf teas from China and Taiwan. However, it is a little more complicated um, compared to Western style and you can tell by looking at how many things are laying in front of me right now. But it doesn't matter, that's why we're here to learn all about it.
I would also like to go over a very very brief history of Gong Fu Cha. As mentioned earlier, we typically use a Gaiwan or a teapot for this style. So Gaiwan first showed up during Yuan Dynasty, uh, but back then people would use it both for uh, brewing tea and to drink tea directly from it, just like that. But gradually, over the course um, of roughly 800 years, people stopped drinking it directly from it. Instead, they just brew, uh, they just brew tea in the gaiwan and then pour the liquor out. However, if you go to China and go to Sichuan province, for example, the tea houses over there are still using the traditional style, which is to brew tea inside and to drink directly from it. Alright, so after all those background information, let's finally get to the exciting part. Um, and let me first of all answer your question, which is probably what are all these things laid out on my table? And I will go over them one by one. But just to let you know, this is what a full um, Gong Fu Cha tea set would look like. First of all, I have this big tea tray here, as you can see. I really like using a big tea tray with a big uh, drawer that can catch a lot of uh, excessive water. Then secondly, we have a Taiwan, as, uh, as mentioned earlier. Some Gong Fu Cha tea cups. Noticing how they are much smaller compared to other type of teacups. A sharing pitcher. This is when you pour liquor out from the gaiwan into the sharing pitcher. It makes sure that the liquor is evenly mixed um, in it. So when you pour the liquor out from the sharing pitcher into your teacups, the thickness of the liquor is evenly distributed. Then I have this accessory set. It has a very elegant name in Chinese, which is Six Gentlemen, uh, because there are six pieces with it. So first of all, I have a, um, well, actually, let's do this one first. I have this here. This is actually it has two functions. So it's a, there's a needle on this side that helps me to clean the sprout of a teapot, just like that. Um, and then on this side, it's sort of like a little um, scoop. What it does is it helps me to maybe just like, you know, like pick the leaves, like if it gets stuck on my gaiwan lid and like put it back in the cup. So, you know, s seems small but very useful. Then secondly, I have this tong here. Uh, what the tong does again, it helps you to, you know, pick some leaves out if you want to observe the leaves better. It also comes, um, it also helps you to pinch the cups and then pour the water out from the cups instead of uh, touching the cups directly with your hands because it is considered a rude manner on the tea table when you serve um, your tea guests. Then I have this big guy, which obviously is a tea scoop, um, which helps you to scoop up the teas and put the dry loose leaf teas into your gaiwan or your teapot. Oh, okay. I don't think this belongs to here. <laughs> um, this is also a tea, uh, a needle. Um, I think this actually comes from another set, but I just put it in here. So let's put that away. Then this piece is really interesting. However, I unfortunately, I don't know the, I can't find the English translation for this one. I will quickly show you what it does. So you see this teapot here. What you do is you put this on the opening of your teapot. So when you pour, when you scoop 
dry tea leaves inside, it makes sure that the dry leaves goes smoothly into your teapot instead of splashing everywhere. And this is very useful if your teapot's opening is small. And then lastly, I have this bottle here. So one, two, three, four, four, five, this is two in one, and six. All together, they are the um, six gentlemen. A tea pet, tea scoop, or maybe tea plate. In Chinese, it's known as uh, cha zhe. What it does is you can put dry leaves on uh, the cha zhe before you start brewing tea. So you can show it to your tea guests and you can just pour the dry leaf directly into your gaiwan or your teapot. Then we also have a tea towel which cleans your tea table if you accidentally spill water or tea. Lastly, we also have some plants. <laughs> You're probably wondering if you have to get every single thing that I just showed you. And the answer is yes. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Um, the essential items are gaiwan, tea tray, obviously, some gongfu cha tea cups, a sharing pitcher, and something that I would highly recommend is um, the six gentlemen accessory. Or you don't have to get the whole six gentlemen set. I would highly, oops. <laughs> However, I would highly recommend the tong because it helps you to, you know, pinch the teacups. Um, it's just good manner on the tea table when you, especially when you have guests over. And um, the the needle, which helps you to clean the sprout of the teapot, and the the little scoop here that helps you to. For example, scoop the dry leaves into your gaiwan. When do I choose a teapot? And when do I choose to use a gaiwan? First of all, gaiwan has an interesting nickname in China, which is the universal brewing pot indicating how it can be used for brewing all types of teas. No problem. Teapot, on the other hand, is more recommended for brewing teas that can handle a higher water temperature since it traps heat better. For example, uh, poor tea or dark tea, aged white tea, medium to higher level roasting oolong teas, such as um, the Oriental Beauty or Dongding, and maybe some aged oolong teas as well.
So before we get into the specific for brewing methods with Gaiwan, I figure I should probably just give a quick overview of how to hold a Gaiwan property in case you are not very familiar with it. So I'll do a quick demonstration. So here you can see I'm using this Gaiwan today and since Gaiwan has the circle shape, you can kind of review it as a clock. So 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and 9 o'clock while it's facing you. You will be mainly use your thumb and your ring finger to hold the guy one. And I will show you what the other, where the other fingers go. So first thing is to place your ring, uh, sorry, your thumb at 6 o'clock and your middle finger at 12 o'clock. And after that, so kind of like that, after that, you will place your index finger on the top of the lid. Just gently place there. There's no, there's no, there shouldn't be much force coming from this uh, index finger. Okay. So once you place everything, as you can see here, they're kind of aligned. Six o'clock, twelve o'clock, and the one in the middle. Of course. Everybody's finger length is different and everybody's hand size is also different. If you can't align them, there's nothing wrong with that. Maybe you find your middle finger sliding backwards or maybe sliding, tilting a little bit more forward. It all depends on your hand size. So 6 o'clock and 12 o'clock are more like a reference point. The most important thing is to find where that is the most comfortable for you. Let's lift up our guy one. And as you can see here, I'm actually not really, I'm not using my ring finger or pinky at all um, because they don't really do anything. And that, with that being said, after you hold up a guy one successfully, you can gently place your ring finger just kind of hide it and also your pinky just hide hide both of them um, tuck them in you know under your uh, middle finger and it should look more or less like this from above and you shouldn't feel unnatural or kind of shaking um, and if you do feel like that that means you probably need a little bit more practice and from the front this is what it looks like from top and from the other side. I hope that helps. Um, it definitely takes a lot of practice. Just to give you an idea, it took me about two months to really, really feel comfortable holding the guy one. And after that, and not just with right hand, right? Not just with right hand, but also with my left hand. Once you start to feel comfortable doing this, then when you pour tea, you generally, again, there's that clock, 12, 3, 6, and 9. You open the lid to about this much, so kind of like a crescent moon, like a very, very skinny crescent moon. And the opening should be, should have the biggest gap at about 9 o'clock. Then you do exactly what I just showed you, Place your thumb, your middle finger, index finger, hold your guy one up, and pour the liquor out. So that was a quick demonstration of how to use a guy one. And now let's uh, go straight into the four golden rules of how to brew the tea with guy one.
So you have seen the leaf to water ratio as well as the water temperature. So now let's go straight into how to pour water into the guide one. So the first method we'll be doing is called swirling leaf six o'clock. Generally speaking, it is used for the first and second round of steeping. The goal is to let tea leaves swear in Gaiwan in a clockwise or counterclockwise circular motion in order to stimulate the frequency to come out. And it is generally used for teas that are all but, such as green tea, white tea silver needle, yellow tea, and some black teas that only have but, such as Yunnan Dianhong and Jinjun Mei. And maybe some small leaf teas as well, um, also for the ball shaped uh, Taiwanese oolong teas. So let's go ahead and I will do a quick demonstration and you can do it with me together. So the first thing I'm going to do is to put leaves into my guy one. I have pre-rinsed all the tea wear and you should always do that. As mentioned earlier, this method is called 6 o'clock swirling tea leaf. That means, again, remember the clock thing we talked about before. 12 o'clock, 3, 6, and 9. And so for this method, you will be pouring water from a 6 o'clock angle right here. And your tea kettle, your water kettle should be more or less tilted um, instead, of going, instead of going straight and just like that. It should always be coming from the side. All right, are you ready? And there we go, let's close the lid. So there's just some details I want to go over after our first steeping. First thing is this guy one contains about 130 to 140 milliliters of water. Um, and as you can see, I actually didn't fill the water all the way up. So I would say I calculated the water as about 120 milliliter to 125 because you read the leaf to water ratio from the previous slide. I measured about 5.5 grams of tea, so somewhere between 5 and 6 grams. And I think that is a um, good ratio for this guy one here. And second thing is, as you can see here, I'm using a YT silver needle for the demonstration of this method. And I'm sure you saw how tea leaves were trying to swear in the guy one from earlier, even though it was not super smooth. Nonetheless, there was the action. When you go for your second steeping, you can do the same thing, pour water from 6 o'clock and make the, the leaves swear one more time in your guy one. I decided to do the first brewing method again since I feel like this guy one is going to be easier for everybody to see. Um, and in this demonstration here, I'm using a green tea based on the 1 to 25 leaf to water ratio. Right, so just as mentioned before, always pour water in from the side angle at about 6 o'clock right here. Very nice, and let's close the lid. And since it's a green tea, the brewing time is about three to four seconds. Awesome. And let's open the lid so that the heat won't be trapped inside to burn the leaves. 
Okay, perfect. I think that will be everything that you need to know about the first brewing method. So let's move on to the second brewing method. The second method is called fixed 7 o'clock. It could be used for the first and second round of steeping, but generally it is used for third or fourth round of steeping. It's similar to the first method and is generally used for all but tea or small leaf teas such as green tea, white tea and black tea as well as for big leaves such as Taiwanese high mountain wulong tea. It allows tea leaves to swirl vertically in Gaiwan in order to further stimulate the fragrance out. It also prevents hot water from pouring directly on the leaf so the teas won't become astringent. For this round of demonstration, I will be using um, the same teas like the one that we have used before which is this green tea here. And as you heard from earlier, we'll be pouring water in from a 7 o'clock angle instead of 6 o'clock. And what this action will do is you will make the teas instead of swirling in the gaiwan like counterclockwise or um, clockwise, you will actually make the teas to swirl vertically. So it's a different direction. So just like the first method, we're going to pour water in from a 7 o'clock but from the side angle rather than going vertically like that. So pour your cattle if you're using your left hand or maybe you're using your um, right hand. If you are right-handed, I would say just do the opposite. Instead of 7 o'clock, uh, you can pour water in from a 4 o'clock angle. However, as you can see now, my teeth are on this side. Um, so what I would do is I would turn my guy one around um, to make sure that whichever direction that my water is going to pour in, that's where most tea leaves are going to be. However, since I am actually left-handed when it comes to, but only when it comes to pouring um, water into Gaiwan, <laughs> I'm going to use my left hand and going from this side. All right, whenever you're ready, let's go. Perfect. Awesome! Those two demonstrations conclude the first two methods. The main purpose of these two methods is to stimulate the aroma of teas to come out through either the circular motion or the vertical motion. It definitely takes a lot of practice. Again, just to give you an idea, it took me about a month to two months to do it successfully at um, a 90% successful rate. But once you get a hand of it, it just comes to you very naturally and very quickly. Another trick that I would like to tell you is that um, I see there are a lot of really, really um, well-designed, very pretty water cattle out there on the market these days. However, as you can see here, I'm still using my grandpa <laughs> water kettle. This is the uh, Bonavita brand right here. Um, so I really, really like this one because the goose neck size is big enough and the sprout is big enough. When I pour water out, the water stream is very strong. If the water stream is not strong enough, it's more likely that you will encounter a harder time for the leaves to have that kind of motion in your gaiwan. The second tip that I would like to give to you is um, at what length, oh sorry, at what 
height that you pour the water in. Um, some people might be afraid of spilling water out everywhere, so they're pouring water at a very low angle, almost touching the lid. Um, I mean the rim. That wouldn't be a good idea because that's another mistake that will result in not having strong enough water stream. Okay, so now let's move on to the third method. And I'm going to change guy one again. I'm excited. The third method is called circle on the ring. This is probably the easiest brewing method of Gaiwan. Generally, it is used for any rounds of steeping, from the first round to the last round. But it's better for teas with big leaves. For example, Wai Tea Han Lu or Shou Mei both have really big leaves. Taiwanese Wulong teas, after the first a couple rounds of steeping, the leaves open up and start to have really big leaves too. Aged teas from the cake, such as aged white tea, poor or dark tea. However, for poor tea and dark tea, um, you should specifically circle water slowly and very gently on the ring for the first and second round of steeping in order to avoid too much aging earthiness to come out all at once and very strongly. Otherwise, you may find it tastes a little too earthy and some people don't really like that. So for this demonstration, I'm actually using a Phoenix Danchong Wulong tea. And as you can see here, the leaves are quite big as well. Um, and plus it will be, look at that. <laughs> and for the last brewing method, we'll be using the same leaf. Um, so I think it will be good. Okay, first thing, the usual, just pour the leaves in there, perfect. And as mentioned earlier, this method is called pouring water around the ring. When you encounter big leaf teas and try to brew them in Gaiwan, you want to submerge tea leaves in water as fast as possible. And that's why we use this pour water on well around the rim area uh, method because it helps the big leaves to get in water as fast as possible. Okay, let's begin. You can choose anywhere as a starting point. Um, I mean a pouring water end point. And this method is probably the most encountered um, Gaiwan brewing methods that you see. I have seen so many people using this method for every single type of tea, on, um, especially on social media. There we go, that was pretty good. Let's close the lid. Okay, so I'm not going to pour the tea out right away, um, even if that's what I'm supposed to do, because something is happening here and I really want to give you um, a quick explanation. As you can see here, I'm going to zoom in. As you can see here, if there's a part of the lid that's buried in the water because it's very hard to encounter Gaiwans that has the perfect lid that fits the perfect body that there's no gap at all and hence when you have the tea liquor overflowing and covering where the lid and the body meet it helps to lock the water inside and it helps to keep the air out Basically, it would just help you to brew better teas. Okay, so now I'm going to pour the liquor out. And obviously this tea is over steeped because I was trying to explain. And there you go. As mentioned, you can use this method from the very first round of steeping all the way to the very last. 
Now you're probably wondering, well, I can just use this method for every single tea. You absolutely can. Um, it's the safest method, it's the easiest method. However, would it make a difference from the first two methods that we talked about? It definitely will. My personal experience and experiments tell me that when you brew different teas such as the small leaf green teas or butts green teas or white teas like silver needle or Taiwanese oolong teas, if you do not make the tea leaves sweat in your guy one, whether it's vertically or a circular motion, the fragrance that comes out is very different from when you do that. So this is definitely an experience um, that's very personal and worth experiment on. For example, you can prepare two guy ones and brew the silver needle side by side. For one, you try to um, make the tea leaves swirl in the guy one. And for the second one, you can do the pour water around the rim and compare the difference. Because when I was going through my tea sommelier training, and this is a story that I always tell, that's what my teacher made me do. Um, and the result was very, very different. So that's something I strongly encourage you to experiment and really understand and see the difference for yourself. All right, so we only have the last method left to talk about and let's uh, go straight to it. The last method is called central pouring. It is almost never used for the first round of steeping and it is used for reviving highly oxidized tea's aroma such as oolong teas when it's getting weary and we usually use it for the fifth or the sixth steepings and so on. It is for medium to high oxidized oolong teas such as wee rock tea, the traditional dongding, poor teas and dark tea. So put it in a simple way. Let's pretend that we have steeped um, this Phoenix Danzong teas three, four, five times. Even though I know we have only done it for one time, but let's just pretend. And after that four or five steepings, I feel like the fragrance and the flavors are slowly fading away. You know, they're getting a little wary. And so in order to um, revive, revive this tea, what I'm going to do is something that I don't, I haven't told you guys to do for any other tea, which is to pour water directly on the leaves. This is something that I would never ask people to do for, um, for example, a green tea or a white tea, basically more delicate tea. And that's why I said you mainly use this method for medium to high level oxidized teas such as um, we rock tea, traditional dongding, poor tea, and dark tea because those teas are the ones that can handle a higher water temperature level and hence when they're getting weary you can use a higher water temperature um, and pour the water directly on the tea leaves to bring some of the flavors and fragrance back. And so here comes the quick demonstration very simple, just as I mentioned, you are going to pour water right in the middle from a relatively high point. There you go. And again, the reason that we're pouring water in from a relatively higher point is to make sure the water stream is strong enough. Alright, so those are the four Gaiwan brewing methods for Gong Fu Cha style. I hope those methods are helpful. And as I 
have said many times during the video, um, no matter which methods, you will take some practice, especially the first and the second one. Even the third one, it seems really easy that you're just pouring water around the ring, but you want to make sure that the water does get on the rim and during which process you don't want to shake your hand that your water is spilling everywhere so it still takes some practice and also as mentioned in the video i strongly encourage you to use one tea the same tea but use these four different methods and see if you can feel any difference the last thing that I would like to mention is that you can also use a clay pot for um, Gong Fu Cha style, obviously. So clay pot is a lot easier. And I have a clay pot right here. And as you can see, it's not very big at all compared to the British style clay pot. Um, there's no pouring water rules. Um, the most important thing is the teas should fill up about one third of the space of the teapot in terms of proportion. Or you can use the leaf to water ratio um, for Gai Wan, the same one. The water temperature for Gai Wan brewing also applies to clay pot brewing. While the steeping time is a little longer for about 20 seconds for aged teas and about one, about 5 seconds for Wulong teas as well, just like a guy one. There are a lot of uh, rooms to wiggle the rules and experiment the rules. Your personal preference can also come in the picture. So this is something that I strongly recommend you to experiment and practice until you find your personal uh, preference. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and I really hope everything is helpful for you. However, don't go away just yet. Um, I still have a few last notes to pass to you. See you back on the tea table. Hi, welcome back. So while you're away learning how to do Gong Fu Cha, I also made some teas myself. Um, then, but then, you know, I'm done drinking. I have some excessive tea here and I just don't want to drink it anymore. So um, I'm going to use this tea to demonstrate maybe another question that's been wandering in your head, which is what does a tea pet do? And I'm going to show you. First of all, different tea pets perform differently, but to give you a quick idea before we end our class by using this tea pet as an example. Are you ready? All right. <laughs> That's basically what the tea pet does, <laughs> just to bring you some laughter. But of course, they also symbolize um, good fortune, good luck, you know, on your tea table. It's just a little cute accessory. So that concludes our Gong Fu Cha workshop today. Obviously, there's a lot of information and it takes a lot of practice to master in holding and using a Gai Wan. So I really hope that the content of this video is helpful for you and maybe will sparkle some interest in you to get into the Gong Fu Cha. If you have any questions, feel free to maybe write me an email or leave a comment. I would love to hear from you. So thank you very much and happy steeping. Bye.